Good day, everyone. Father Jim here. And yes, it is Christmas Day. It's Monday, the 25th of December. Today, I'm going to read the gospel that we usually don't hear at our Christmas masses. It's the gospel that's used during Mass during the day. But it's still a very profound gospel on today's feast day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory the glory as of the Father's only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No, no, no one has ever seen God, the only begotten Son, God who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful reading. I remember hearing about this some time ago. Not sure I'd ever do it, but a pastor and the parish worship committee in some parish decided one year to do something different in the Christmas pageant and rather than using a doll in the role of Jesus or even a live baby. They debated back and forth what to do instead and finally they settled on putting a light inside the manger that would glow upward at just the right moment during the pageant. Everything went well during the rehearsals, and then came the big night. And when the moment came for Jesus to be born, the stagehand forgot to turn on the light in the, in the manger. And so off stage, you could hear the director saying in a loud whisper, turn on Jesus, turn on Jesus. St. John, the apostle who wrote our gospel, wrote, what came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. One of the great synonyms used by St. John for Jesus is light. On this great and glorious day, we are reminded once again that no matter how many people try to bring darkness upon the earth, Jesus will always be found dispersing the darkness into his own glorious light. Some may wonder how this comes about, the darkness of the world being dispersed by the light of Jesus. But we do not have to wonder. Every glad tiding we bring by taking warm clothing to Perhaps the homeless shelter disperses the darkness of despair with the light of Jesus as hope. 
every glad tiding we bring by supporting our giving trees and our parishes disperses the darkness of despair with the light of Jesus' hope. Every glad tiding we bring by sharing a meal with a lonely person disperses the darkness of despair with the light of Jesus' hope. The suffering that humanity endures must give way to the better angels that dwell within us. While few, if any of us, have the power necessary to end world violence, hunger, or disease, all of us have the power to bring the light of Jesus where possible, right here to our personal worlds of influence. But we also have to pray that the littlest and youngest among us, all starry-eyed today over the presence under our trees, will be the diplomat, farmer, or researcher who brings lasting peace, the eradication of hunger, or the cure to the diseases that plague our world as they grow up knowing the warm embrace of the light of the world. If we understand the meaning of the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us, then we know that when all the presents have been opened, the decorations have come down, and the parties have subsided, our Christmas joy is far from being depleted. For our mission as disciples of the newborn king is to always make sure to turn on Jesus. And so we pray on this glorious day of Christmas, the beautiful feast of the incarnation. O oh God, who have made this day a most sacred one, radiant with the splendor of the true light. Grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. We ask this in his name. Amen. Blessed and Merry Christmas to you and your families. Let's keep praying for one another as we now unfold the beauty of this Christmas season. God bless you.